Is early success in the entertainment industry a blessing or a curse? <laughs> That's such a fascinating question. I think it could be both. I mean, I think it could be a blessing for someone. It could be a curse for someone. It could be both. Um, and I see that. Um, I'll talk about myself. I had very early success. I was, I'd been in film school a year when I sold a uh, pitch to Ridley Scott. Front page of Variety, Ridley's making the movie. Ultimately didn't, but it was a front page of Variety. Every studio was fighting for me. In some ways, I feel so blessed and lucky because um, I deal with writers who have so much talent and passion and they've been at it for three years, five years, seven years, 10 years. And they forego, they've forgone a career and, and another career. You know, they, they are just working on writing. They have a day job to pay the bills. Um, they're not living the lifestyle they want because everything is about their writing. And they have this just, is it going to happen for me? And, and you know, I want to be married. I want to have kids. And like, if I'm going to pivot, I should do it soon. I don't want to keep doing this if it's not going to work out for me. I don't want to pivot if it's about to work out for me. What do I do? And it's such a, for someone to ask me that, they've got to be in a lot of pain to ask because no one else can answer that. I thank God I never had to go through that. Um, it all happened so quickly for me. So like that was a huge blessing. I have to deal with that. And I see so many writers make it so much harder on themselves than they have to because they're so impatient. You know, they're like, I've, I've written this number of scripts and I've been at it this amount of time and it's got, this next one has to happen. They, they just put all the weight of the world on their next project. And that's a big reason why they don't actually get to attend. And we were talking about the clarity spectrum in that previous video, that process video. Because they just, they, they've got to get this thing out there and it's got to sell. Because if it doesn't, then they're going to go back to law school or graduate school or whatever. So certainly a blessing to not have to go through that. Um, it's also a blessing because I, I learned a lot as in my first couple of assignments. And I had producers and directors teach me so much. And I was getting paid. To, I was getting paid a good amount of money to learn and get better. So... Um, especially if, you know, for someone who doesn't have a lot of money, that's a nice way of learning because you're, you're getting access to Ridley Scott. You're getting access to Wolfgang Peterson. You're getting access for me, like working title. I was getting access. That's the thing that is sort of um, heartbreaking is that when my career was started and it was going really big, I was going to all these parties and I was meeting the Coen brothers. I was meeting Quentin Tarantino and I was talking to them about craft and process and learning from them. And then my day job is I was working for Working Title, I think are the smartest producers I ever met, and um, Ridley Scott and his team. Like I had access to everything that an aspiring writer needs, but for the most part, it's only the people who have success that have access to that. And for the mo now I needed access to that because I didn't know what I didn't know. But most writers who have access to all that, they, they're already amazing writers. So it's like the people that need access to these people can't get access to these people. So it gave me access to people who were so successful and smarter than me, um, who were willing to help me. Uh, I got paid to learn. And I didn't have to go through that incredibly emotional struggle of how long do I do this. So I'm forever grateful for all of that. And so that was just straight up blessings. You know, and for some people, it's just a straight up blessing, but there can be some curses to it. Um, you know, for me, um, it just came so easy. And right out of the gate, I was working with these amazing people and getting paid all this money. I was so young and so naive and so stupid. I just thought that's normal. That's just how it's going to be. You know, I mean, studios were flying me first class and it was just this amazing life. And then when my career took a dip, it was just crushing for me, you know, because I, I had an entitlement. I didn't, I hadn't been forged in the fire of, of what this is like. People who struggle for a while, they will, they will develop a stronger process. One of the reasons that I never had the success that I wanted, uh, and part of the reason I walked away from writing after 10 years is I had such a painful relationship with it. And I talk about this like fear of rejection and I was never really writing to my best ability and I was pulling my punches and for the most part, I hated writing. And I don't know if it would have been different if I didn't have success early on, but what the writers I work with, I always tell them, your blessing right now that you're not, you don't have a career 
is you get to work on your relationship with writing. You get to experiment like we've been talking about in these other videos. You get to evolve your process. I couldn't do that really because you know, with Ridley Scott, he had six weeks to write a script. That's not a time to be experimenting with your process. That's not a time to be saying, oh, I have this strength, but I have this weakness as a writer. Let me just put this on hold and find a class or a workshop that can help me turn this weakness into a strength. No, it's like you go to war with the army you have. Like, I have to write the script to the best of my ability. And then I just got on this, like, I was like an addict. I just wanted another deal, more money, another deal. I never was willing to stop and develop myself. And I know so many managers and agents, but particularly managers, it drives them crazy because they'll a writer is good enough to have a career, but they're not quite good enough to have the career they want. And they won't get off the gravy train. There's this fear of, I see it in the writers I work with, I saw it in myself, which is, if I don't take this deal, I'll never get another deal. You know, because someday the industry is going to wake up and realize they made a mistake with me. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm no good. And so every deal was the last deal. So I'll like, let me do this and bank the money. And then I'll go train myself. But no, then there's a new deal. A new deal. My agent at some point said, you're a crack addict. Like this. I mean, you're, you're addicted to these deals. You're never going to stop doing this. And it was true. Um, you know, and then my father passed away and it just changed everything. And, and then I, I walked away. But... Um, so I tell people, you know, who it's not happening for them right away, which is nor that's the I was incredibly just fortunate. Um, I had some really good mentoring, some really good training by people, and I was at the right place at the right time. So it, it was just very fortunate. But people who the normal experience, that's not the case. I just worked with a writer. I'm going to see him actually tomorrow night. Um, he's been at it for six years and he just sold three feature scripts. But in those years, what his blessing was that he really got to change his relationship to writing. He got to realize that he has inherent strengths, weaknesses, and blind spots. Blind spots are weaknesses we don't know we have. And he was willing and, and had the mindset to find people to help show him his blind spots and how to attack weaknesses and turn them into strengths. That, that's entirely what I do philosophically in my workshops. And so people, not necessarily in my workshops, wherever you do it, you have the opportunity to not only become a stronger writer, but change your relationship with writing, where you're not so afraid of rejection, and you're not so afraid of other, you, you have a core, and, you, you, and no one can take that from you. No one can take your voice from you. No one can take your integrity from you. And you really have a, you can really forge that in the fire of not succeeding. And then when you do get a career, you could be more likely to make smarter decisions stand up for yourself, say no to projects. Because that's the thing, like, I had had no financial safety net and I had all these loans to pay off and I just felt like they're offering me this amount of money. I never can make that amount of money doing anything else. I have to say yes. But people who have gone four or five years without success, they know how to survive. You know, they know how to financially take care of themselves. So. If they are in a situation where someone's offering them a deal to do a project and they know in their heart of hearts it's not a good move for them, it's not moving them to where they want to get to, they might have more strength in saying no. You know, because the idea of like, okay, so let's just say I say no a couple times and I, I stop getting offers and I got to go back and write a spec. They're like, well, I've done that. I survived that. So, I mean, I, if I had to choose, I, I would have chosen launching a career early on. I think there's a lot of blessings in that, but I think there could also be a lot of blessings in having to struggle a while, find your voice, find your integrity, find why you're doing this, change your process, evolve your process, and get stronger as a writer. So then when it does happen for you, you can really have the career you most want.